Good morning. I'm here to tell you something you do not know. And I'm going to stress the fact that these are incredibly good news. And I'm going to try to convince you to do what is necessary to make the future even better. The good news is that the world population will never reach 9 billion people. It will peak at 8 billion in 2040 and then decline. And the reason for this is not starvation, it's not pestilence, it is not war, but it is because the world's women will voluntarily choose to have much fewer children in the future than they have had in the past. And this smaller population is going to make life much better for all of us and the problem with all the old people that is a side effect of this will be solved, and I'll tell you how. How can I be so sure that the world population is actually going to peak at 8 billion people? I do so by looking at the past, looking at past fertility. Fertility is the number of children that a woman on average gets during her productive, reproductive age. This is the world average. It has declined from 1970, four and a half children per woman on average, to two and a half per woman average now. And this decline is going to continue. Uh, it will, uh, uh, as I see it, pass through the replacement rate of 2.1 children per person in the middle of this century and in the, in the middle of this decade. And as a consequence, the world population will peak and start declining slightly uh, later. The important thing is that we know why this is happening, why the women in the rich world are getting increasingly fewer children over time. This is because they legitimately choose a career rather than more children. And more interestingly, women in the poor world follow the same uh, pattern. Women in the poor world increasingly live in urban slums, and in an urban slum, it does not make sense to have a large family. A large family is expensive in opposition to what happened in the village. In the village, of course, more children was a help. In the slum, it is not. And as a consequence, also the fertility in the urban slums uh, in the poor world are declining. And, of course, it will help that we are supplying better health, better education and cheap contraception to the world, which further accelerates this development. If you do the math, you know, once you know the fertility rate and you know the uh, mortality, you can calculate the world population and you see it is peaking in uh, 2040 and will be in decline, you know, at the end of most of your lives. I will die, of course, uh, somewhere uh, on the way. Uh, this, this, uh, this forecast differs from uh, what you think you know and what the organizers of this meeting think they know. Uh, this is very similar to the UN low forecast, not the median forecast that all of you know about. And let's see how this looks in areas that are closer to us. This is the fertility of Europe. And it passed through 2.1 in 1975, and is going down, and as a consequence, the European population is very close to a peak and will remain stable and then start declining slightly, uh, as uh, mentioned. If you look at China, we have exactly the same development. Here, the population is very near its peak as a consequence of the uh, Deng one-child family uh, policy introduced 33 years ago. There are places in the world which are lagging the development. This is declining fertility in Africa. has gone down from seven to roughly five children per, per woman per uh, lifetime, but it's going in the right direction. This is, of course, great news, because a smaller population is a solid advantage for all of us. First of all, it is an advantage because it makes it possible to create a sustainable world at a high level of standard. That's the high standard of, li of living. Uh, secondly, it does leave some resources to 
the future generations. And thirdly, it also, and importantly, leaves some space for other living creatures. I mean, the world should not be filled with human beings. Still, most people are scared by the prospect of a declining population. And they are scared because they're worried about all us old that are going to be entertained by, by the working classes. It is true that the number of old in the world, those above 65, I'm one of them, uh, uh, will increase dramatically over the next 40 years by roughly a billion people. But what most people do not think about is the sim simultaneous decline in the number of young. So the number of young is actually going to go down by half a billion in, in the same period. And the labor force is going up during the same period, and the true support burden. You know, how many people each working person actually carries on his or her shoulders will actually stay constant over the next 40 years. So each of you will typically have to tend to roughly one half child plus elderly, and that will be the same over the next 40 years. Uh, so in, in practice, what is going on is that what will happen over time is that you will have, or we will all have fewer children, so we will save money on kindergartens and summer camps and schools, and we will have more parents, so we will have to spend the same money on trying to treat me and all the other elderly in this old person's home where we will be. So the total cost will be the same, except that you will spend it on in a slightly different way. So... Uh, that basically means that uh, we should welcome uh, population decline. Uh, there are no obvious, uh, there are lots of advantages with this and no obvious negative side effects. Uh, the important thing, however, is that most people remain unconvinced by this argument. They still fear the, the population decline. And they do so because they fear you know, the burden of increasing number of old, although that is wrong. This is what leads to the knee-jerk uh, conventional response, which is to pay women to get more children or to immigrate or, or to allow immigration of young people to take care of, of, of the work. The important thing here is that you must remember that these uh, things do not work. You know, we have tried to... S uh, uh, give incentives to women in the rich world in order to try to get the fertility back up to 2.1 for 30 years. It doesn't work because women, of course, would much rather like to have a real job than to be home tending kids. And the immigration policy, of course, very quickly, you know, the young, hardworking people you import get old and become part of the problem. So those two solutions, which are the ones that are being pursued by most governments in the West, do not work and will not work. So what you should rather do is to increase the pension age. This solves the problem in two ways. You know, by increasing the retirement age, you know, the number of old goes down, and at the same time, the number in the working class goes up. So that uh, you can actually eliminate the whole problem uh, by increasing the retirement age by eight years, by 2050. And by 2050, all of us will live eight more years. So we're basically, you know, still will have the same number of years uh, in retirement. And what does this mean? Clearly, elderly people are not particularly good at anything, except I am, of course, good at everything. But uh, <laughs> there are certain heavy jobs that they can't be doing. So largely, what we will be doing in the future is, of course, to have the young old helping the old old. <laughs> because basically, we are... Uh, and this is, of course, what most people uh, like. And in progressive countries like my country of Norway, we are already moving in this direction. You know, our retirement policies are such that you cannot, you, know, you can choose to retire at 62, and you cannot be fired until you're 70. And we're now starting to increase this top level to 75, so that if a person actually wants to do the job and is capable of doing the job, there's no reason why he should stop or she should stop doing this. And of course, the elderly, the elderly people love this, and those that 
choose to do so can, of course, leave earlier, but then at a lower annual uh, payment. People are worried that this leads to, to unemployment, you know, keeping all us old bastards you know, in, the, in, the, in the jobs. Well, then you must always remember that in society, you, know, you need not have unemployment if you don't want it. There is always a certain amount of work that needs to be done in society, and if you split this equitably among all the people, you know, everyone will be working, and there is no unemployment. Difficult to do from an administrative point of view, but if we wanted to do it, it's doable. And if there isn't enough work for everyone to work, you know, 1,500 hours a year, you just reduce the number of hours that people uh, work. So the rationing of paid work is probably one of the interesting policies of the next 40 years. So this is the innovation in my talk. Then, in addition to this, uh, what should you do? You should do the following. First of all, you should basically relax. The problem will solve itself because the increase in us old will be compensated for a decrease in the number of children. So if you don't do anything, you, know, you will be having the same expenditure for children and elderly, except that it is a slightly different pattern of payment. But you should do more. And it's a moral obligation to follow what I'm now saying. First of all, you should tell everyone else about this, because they don't know. They are as confused and misled as you were initially, and as uh, some I've heard speaking are. <laughs> uh, secondly, uh, you should, of course, uh, support the increased retirement age. Thirdly, you should, of course, never, ever, ever have more than one child. <laughs> and thirdly, uh, and most importantly, you should give moral support to those hundreds of millions of women that have already, during the last several decades, made the heavy choice of having fewer children. You know, and you should make them feel good about this. You know, that this is, they have truly helped society by doing this, and truly helped their families, and truly helped the future. And so, together, if, we do, if you do all these things, and we are successful, we might really achieve my dream, which is a dream of four billion lively, sustainable people on this small planet of ours in the year 2100. Thank you. Thank you.